As the world battles to fight coronavirus and with no known vaccines yet, Senegal is employing affordable and widespread testing as a strategy to flatten the curve. Without much of a health budget, Senegal is being championed for controlling the virus. From early detection mobile kits to 3D printed ventilators, the West African nation is demonstrating a possible model in curbing COVID-19, relying on the experience of managing the Ebola outbreak. To help us make sense of what's happening there, we're joined live from Dakar by journalist Edit Imor. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Senegal is in the news for all the good reasons. Could you tell us more about what's going on? Well, indeed, uh, it's, it's great to see a West African country uh, virtually being spoken about by all and sundry. Uh, they have been able to put together a very, um, a very small test kit that can give a result within 10 minutes. And they call it the $1 test kit. Um, however, this is just uh, the uh, first phase of it, a prototype phase of it, and um, we wait till June when the mass production will be done. Uh, but for now, I think uh, they are just trying to finalize everything that concerns the test kit and to ensure that it works properly before the mass production. Uh, how reliable are these test results that are being uh, produced from this $1 kit? And is it really $1, as you say, or are there projections that this might, the price might increase going forward, depending on what the production is? Well, for now, um, the idea of the $1 is to show you how cheap it can actually be. Um, a very good example is the uh, regular pregnancy kit. Uh, test kits. I mean, it's, it's just like that. Something, uh, just you know, something very tiny. And then uh, with your swab, saliva, mucus, and then you can you know get to see the line move to indicate whether you are infected or not. So um, indeed, it is quite cheap, and that's why they decided to name it the one dollar test kit. Uh, this is being done by uh, in collaboration with uh, a UK uh, medical um, uh, company known as Mologic, and they have been able to fund the uh, Pasteur the Institute here in Dakar, uh, one million pounds, and they have been able to put together this together. So uh, it's efficient, it's been approved by them, it's working, uh, but we only have to wait till June or thereabout to get to see what this test kit really looks like, and if it to be something we can walk into the regular pharmacy and get or we need to go to the, uh, you know, dedicated hospital or pharmacy as it is. But for now, I can say it's indeed very cheap. A very good example is what you have as the pregnancy test kit, uh, which you can find in any pharmacy. All right, let's look at the figures coming from Senegal. As it stands, um, we understand you have 823 confirmed cases with 296 recovered cases and about nine deaths. What can other countries, including world power like the U.S. and the U.K., learn from this Western African country? Uh, first of all, uh, Senegal is, uh, has a population of barely 13 million, and that makes the society very small, and they are able to control the population. Um, I've, I've always been saying it, and I'll keep on saying it. This country, they do have a robust health system, and that's why... Um, they were able to manage, they are learning, actually learning from the experiences of Ebola, you know, a couple of years back, and that has really strengthened. After the Ebola, they were able to invest, you know, in institutes like uh, uh, Pasteur Institute here in Dakar, um, you know, their great fan hospital, and they were able to invest in, in, other, in other areas in terms of uh, innovative uh, um, uh, project and stuff that can help in the healthcare sector. So I think, um, first of all, they have a good health care plan, uh, you know, in place where uh, you can walk into the hospitals and get treated at a very affordable uh, price. And then also if you check the rate of uh, maternal mortality in, in the country here, it's quite low. So that gives them a, a huge hedge, you know, uh, over other West African countries. So for now, I think better planning. Um, uh, contact tracing, proper contact tracing, um, and then the coffee has been on for o almost a month now, and citizens have been adhering to them. By 8 p.m., you can't find anybody on the street uh, till 6 a.m. the following morning. So uh, that has been on. There's also the compulsory 
wearing of the face mask by everyone. Social distancing is a major thing here. Uh, if you have an office of uh, 20 people, you have to let 10 work from home. All right. Let, uh, let, let me yes. interject quickly because we're almost okay. out of time to ask you about the position of the Frederick government as regards what's going on, um, the Nigerian government as regards what's going on in Senegal. Um, we understand that they are uh, studying the developments there. Um, do you think maybe they are being too hesitant to embrace something um, because it is African or they are just exercising due diligence? Incidentally, my colleague and I, my other Nigerian colleague here, we were discussing about this uh, the other day. And we think that um, uh, because this hasn't been approved yet by the World Health Organization, the Nigerian government are not uh, taking all of this with much seriousness. But I am happy that uh, the NCDC director mentioned the other day that they have consulted with the Senegalese government via the Africa CDC, and we'll be seeing how they can you know, get uh, uh, a book purchase of the test kit here. I think for Nigeria, uh, the being the giant of Africa should really uh, have been the one Senegal should be learning from. But, you know, reverse is the case here. Uh, but again, it's not about you being the giant. It's about some of uh, having your system to work. And if you have an efficient system that works, uh, then people can learn from you. Uh, right. It's good that you're learning from Senegal, and which is clearly uh, pointing to the fact that we don't invest in research. We don't invest in the healthcare sector. Um, just a couple of weeks back, uh, before the entire lockdown, we heard the fact that most of uh, uh, people from from the Europe were actually returning back home to get treated here, especially where the country tropical diseases in the UK, the Europe, and the rest of them, they come back to Senegal because of their healthcare system. So right. I think it's better that the Nigerian government is embracing you know, this idea and working together with the Senegalese government to learn how this is done. We have great brains back home. And all we need to do, invest in those brains. And I think we can uh, come out with something far better than what Senegal has done. All right, Dimor, thank you very much for your time and your thoughts on the news. Thank you for having me.